So who we are, uh, back in 2014, I started this company on November the 1st. Um, it just felt like an auspicious day, uh, 11.01 to start my company. And I was making a lipstick in my kitchen on my stove and packing and shipping orders out of my basement that was very famously full of spiders and had no heat. So <laughs> the image is I'm in this giant fluffy white bathrobe and a toque. Um, you know, with my toddler kind of hanging around me as I'm packing and shipping orders all over the world. And I'll never forget the very first order that I got that wasn't from someone I knew was to a woman named um, Josephina in Cincinnati. And I was so thrilled to get that order and it was just delightful that someone actually wanted the stuff that I was making. And the reason that I made it because I've been in the beauty industry for a really long time, 20 years at that point, and I know I look really young, and it's because I use great products. <laughs> but the big part about it was that the industry that I loved really started to make me feel very cynical because there wasn't anyone in the industry that wanted to do things differently because we wanted to maintain the status quo so large international conglomerate beauty companies can make billions of dollars in profits at, you know, the... It's not at the benefit of the customers, really. Beauty companies, for the most part, prey on fear and shame. They use that type of marketing to make you feel like you're not good enough, so then you buy more of their products. And I was in that, I was part of that, and it didn't make me feel good at the end of the day. And ultimately, that's what people want. They want to feel good at the end of the day about what they've spent their hard-earned time, time away from their families, time away from their hobbies. They want to feel good about what they've done. And so I started thinking a lot about this, and I started asking questions because I'm a curious person by nature. Why do we do things like this? Why do we use this? Why do we do that instead of this? And the answers were not satisfactory. There was a lot of, well, because we've always done it this way, or well, we can't do it that way because then that will hurt our bottom line. And I started thinking about why couldn't we do things better without hurting our bottom line? In fact, maybe making our bottom line more sustainable. The true essence of capitalism, that's a dirty word, I know, but the true essence of it is that companies are supposed to earn a profit that they then take and invest back into that company, back into the employees, and then ultimately back into the community. So then we all have this beautiful global network where everyone can succeed and thrive. Doesn't that sound amazing? It's not a dream, it's a reality, we just have to make it happen. And so when I started it late, it was with that in the back of my mind, along with all of the ideals that come from starting an independent beauty company. Not using fear or shame-based marketing, making things inclusive for everyone who wants to use makeup, and making sure that every single thing that we produce, we take responsibility for, from conception, which is just the idea in my brain, to end of life, which is the garbage that you're left with at the end of it. And that is something that had never been thought about before in the beauty industry. Ultimately, you buy seven lipsticks and you keep them in your pocket because maybe like me, you have a lipstick shaped hole in your heart. <laughs> and ultimately, at the end of the day, you are responsible for disposing of those seven lipsticks. That's not fair. I like to think about it in these terms. Imagine if the McDonald's Corporation had been financially responsible for every single piece of litter that we found with their logo on it. That would have made them change to reusable cups decades ago. And so if we can do that in the beauty industry, then we can actually make the products that we use every single day more sustainable, less wasteful, and that's what really changes the world. It's not a handful of people that own Teslas. No offense, Teslas are cool. But it's all of us using reusable, repurposed products in our daily lives that will actually make a difference. And that was how I started my company. That's a little bit about me. Now, why B Corp? So as you can see, from the very beginning, I had these ideals that a company could be more than just a money-making machine, that could actually be a benefit to people on the planet. I didn't even know along the way that we were actually following the B Corp ideals before I even knew what a B Corp was. You know, the first B Corp that I became aware of was Patagonia. I'm not sure if you've recently heard that Yvonne gave away his entire company, which is amazing. Um, and I love the idea that we could actually do our day-to-day -day work and still feel really amazing about how we're leaving the planet. And so I looked into what B Corp would mean for us. As a small company, it is significant, the amount of time that you need to invest to become B Corp certified. 
But the reason that it made sense for us is because it's a tangible accountability for already pretty good practices. So for a lot of employers, they're already doing a lot of things that would make them earn the B Corp points, but they just don't have it written down. That's where Jocelyn comes in. Or they're not totally sure if what they're doing is correct. They're doing the right thing for their employees, but they don't know if that actually makes them a B Corp. So it's about the accountability that maybe you've already got in place, but you don't actually have a litmus for. It's new ideas to improve your company as you grow. So every day we're thinking of new ways that we can do better and be better, and B Corp also helps us be accountable for that. It's an internationally recognized symbol that you're awesome. When people see the B, they're like, hey! And it's really exciting to actually meet other B Corps. Tony's in the room, Abigo is also a local B Corp. You may also have heard of Just Those Dips, they're a local B Corp. So there are so many amazing companies around that you wouldn't even know have done all this background work to make sure that they are accountable, not only for themselves or to their customers, but actually to a third party entity that makes sure that they're putting their money where their mouth is, essentially. It underlines your mission and values, and that is incredibly important because, especially through an HR lens, through an employer lens, I only want individuals working in my company that align with my mission and values. And having that B Corp stamp ensures that I'm going to be able to have people that come to me because they've seen that. We balance people, planet, and profit. Notice I said balance, right? One is not more important than the other. In the business ecosystem, we need to make a profit. We're not nonprofits, that's important. But we have to balance that with people and purpose. It links your financials with responsibility. And that's a key thing that not a lot of people understand about B Corps. It actually links those two things. So we can balance the three. And the most important thing is that it takes your mission, your values, your sustainability, your accountability from a philosophy to a business driver. And using that business driver, you can become more successful, which means you can continue to do business and continue to employ people and continue to make the world a better place. When we live our values, we attract like-minded people. And that's ultimately what you want for your business. You want people working in your business that are like you. They're not exactly like you. You want diverse opinions at the table, but ultimately you want them to all have that underlying value of, for us, kindness. For you, it might be something different. Maybe it's health or growth or wellness, but it's all about having that underlying value be the same so you can have many disparate voices at the table leading change and moving you forward. So quick <laughs> highlights of the journey. Um, we started planning to earn our B Corp certification in June of 2019. We started the actual certification process in April of 2020 and we were certified in September of 2020. It's a pretty long process and it requires a lot of outside support. So the minimum score is 80 points. And the way that it works is basically there's a weighted scoring system in five areas, governance, workers, community, environment, and customers. So a lot of people think being a B Corp is just about environmental responsibility. It's not, there are five key areas that they look at. So we're gonna focus on the governance as workers piece because that's actually why I ended up engaging Jocelyn and Reimagine Work to help us. Because, you know, I'm a pat on the back and a handshake kind of gal. I'm a like, hey, let's do this. Yeah, I'm, of course I'm gonna do it. My word is my bond because I'm, you know, 100 years old. Um, and so he just very gently reminded me that mm, you need to have it written down. And I'm like, do I? And then B Corp was like, mm-hmm, you need to have it written down. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you say you do these things, you need to prove that you do these things and have them written down. And so a lot of the weighted scoring comes from your ability to prove that you're doing the things that you say you're doing. So the minimum is 80. We ended up with a score of 93.1, uh, which at the time, oh, thank you. Um, which at the time was the highest score for any beauty company um, that had become a B Corp. And there's a few. Um, we're not the highest yet, but we're up for recertification this year. So we're, we're pumping for a 98. We'll see how we do. So for workers, the key areas of interest are things like the percentage of salary versus hourly workers. And then what is the percentage between your highest paid employee and your lowest paid employee? Do you pay a living wage? Is it a single living wage or a family living wage? So there's a lot of financial governance when it comes to how your workers are treated. 
because they are keenly interested in financial security. And as a B Corp, that needs to be one of the things that you're focused on, is the well-being and health and financial security of your employees. Health, wellness, and safety, career development, there's a ton of weighted points in career development. Actually, I could even, I'm looking at you, Diane. Um, you know, there, we provided so much career development for our team, even after the, the certification, because it made us realize that we have an opportunity to provide this for our, our teammates, which would only make our company better. And so again, that's another way that B Corp gave us ideas on how we could improve our company. So it's not always about getting points, it's sometimes just about improving the company. Um, and then engagement and satisfaction. So lot, lots of surveys, right, Kyla? <laughs> you know, twice a year surveys, feedback constantly, uh, we call it 365 face-to-face -face feedback. Um, you know, and our initial assessment showed us we were doing okay, but we didn't have the documentation, and that is really where Jocelyn and her team were just invaluable. I'm not, you know, a person who writes stuff down unless it's on a random amount of post-it notes that looks like I'm trying to solve a murder, um, which I haven't ever solved a murder, just FYI. But yeah, and I think the biggest thing about being a, a B Corp now and why we'll, we'll recertify this year, even though it is an incredible amount of work, is that it's ongoing support for values-based hiring. And as a growing company, we need people who want to join our team who believe in what we're doing and have that underlying values alignment. You know, I, I want the type of team that is, you know, everyone at the table comes from a different place, but ultimately we all have the same goal in mind. And the way that we do that is by working with, you know, Jocelyn and our HR team because they understand our needs, they understand who we're looking for and why we're looking for them, and they understand the interview process that actually makes being a B Corp really easy. Um, yeah, then that's it. Thank you, Melody. Thank awesome. you. I'm going to close the call chat, and then I'll pass it over to Kyla, and then okay. we'll do some questions. How does that sound? Because um, in preparation for this, I was listening to some podcasts on more about B Corp certification, and I was thought, like, we should talk about this more as a practice of HR people. And then I thought, like, what would it take for Reimagine to do this? So I think, I think it's an interesting discussion within you know, our people and culture industry about how we can champion this in our own workplaces, including ours. I will talk a little bit about Reimagine and what we do, and you'll, you'll hear the essence when I go through my thoughts today. But really, um, Reimagine work is focused on people and operations, and I like to say, although cheesy and cringy, we want to do HR, comma, but differently. And so you'll, you'll hear why, you'll hear why that is today and why for me as a business owner, my goal is to support businesses that strive to do socially good work like Tony and like Melody, Alate and Abigo. Um, so I think one of the things that you know about, you need to know about the essence of Reimagine work is that when I started Reimagine work, I was very intentional about the kind of clients that I wanted to work with. I only wanted to work with organizations that questioned the status quo, were willing to look at their systems and their way of being leaders. And I didn't want to work with anybody that was not willing to do that. And so when I first started, I did what all entrepreneurs should do is I wrote down a list of all of the people that I wanted to work with and on that list was Melody and Elate and the reason that it was is because a while ago many many years ago I had heard a story about how I don't even know if you've ever told me if this story is true or no, not. No, it, it, yeah, I'll okay. let you tell it. Anyways, yeah. I had heard a story that Sephora had come in to buy a late and Melody had said no. And I was like, that is the kind of leader and the kind of company I want to work with because that is who I want to be. It wasn't Sephora, it was Target. Okay. So close. Close. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty remarkable. Because for me, that is putting your values over profit, right? And there's lots of people that would sell to Target slash Sephora. Um, so, <laughs> put them in the same basket. The same basket. Yeah. So I think that when Melody reached out, and we're going to focus really today on interviewing, but we also supported with handbooks and policy and 
bullying and harassment training and employment contracts and all of those foundational HR pieces. Yeah, we, we couldn't have got our certification without you. Like, you know that. That's, well, I didn't actually until yeah, yeah, we yeah. started talking about We the couldn't have. Work. Yeah, yeah. There was so much support through that that I didn't even know we needed. Even though I think you told me 17 times you need a handbook, Melody. I'm like, no, I don't. It's fine. Um, and I think, you know, what we're going to focus on is really one of the trickiest thing, especially in the job market. So I think we started working with Melody pre-pandemic, leading into the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And so t hard job market. So we're Victoria-based company. We need people to be in person. And Melody at the time handed us like five orders. And of course, I want to do work to support companies and bring candidates in that are, that are aligned with their values. And only when our values are aligned do we belong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the worst jobs I ever had in the world was because there was not a values fit for me. Mm -hmm. Which I think anybody who's had a bad job mm -hmm. yeah. might feel the same way. And also, so I worked in a fast food restaurant. That was <laughs> terrible. I'm not sure. Like, I was not equipped for that. But. <laughs> but, and so, so the way that we're able to achieve that as an organization, and for me as an individual, you know, who do I want on my team? I want people that I know I can talk to about feeling challenged and feeling accountable for that challenge and, you know, have those conversations about how well they feel in terms of compensation and have those conversations because when everything is values aligned, all of those difficult things become easier. And so starting that from the hiring process and building that into, we are looking for someone who has this very broad skill set because I know they're going to feel challenged by some of the work that I'm gonna throw at them, right? And I think that, that if you can do that for your HR clients and, and create that litmus for them to be able to hire the right people, then they will always win and so will you. I will say from a candidate perspective though, I'm following up on your question. I did strongly push my skill set as well because I was very aware that kind of the general initial picture wouldn't align with what my resume had. Mm. So I worked very hard to kind of, I don't know if cherry pick is the best way to say it, but I had a, I worked in hospitality as well. I worked in nonprofits from a personal background. So I worked quite a bit to put all of those together and package that and present it in line with my values. Um, the values kind of, because I never really used that kind of language or thought initially, it was really kind of working with these two groups that that became more clear, but mm -hmm. I was still very concerned that it might not work. So I was thinking, okay, well, I can write thanks to grad school, I did a lot of writing. Um, my oral history background allowed me to connect with people on a very deep level and build a huge amount of empathy because I worked in trauma-informed research. But I also worked for Tourism Victoria, so I had that customer service background and understood the importance of kind of going above and beyond and making people's day. So I kind of had to work in two modes, which do, does this align, mm -hmm. but also can, can I actually do kind of those like day-to-day -day activities as well? And I kind of attacked it from both fronts because yeah, I can totally see from your perspective. I have had candidates who've applied for a late who were just like, I, I love what you do and I, you know, I really connect, but their skill set may not be strong enough. And mm -hmm. it is, it is certainly a challenge to make sure that you can balance both, but um, well, it seems like you're the right person for the job, so uh, <laughs> 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 Kyla built up, beat out a lot of people. <laughs>